William Leo Grant is a professor at American University here in Washington, D.C., and he joins us to help us explore Fidel Castro's life and legacy. Thank you for joining us, Professor. My pleasure. Tell us, how was Fidel Castro able to survive for so long um, without an attempted coup? Well, in, when the revolution began in the 1960s, he was extraordinarily popular. Um, he first made Cuba a fully independent country by kicking mm -hmm. out the United States, which had dominated Cuba since the turn of the century. He provided free health care and free education for the population. He um, abolished legal segregation of, for, for Afro-Cubans. He guaranteed women equal pay for equal work. He instituted a whole series of social reforms that raised the standard of living of ordinary Cubans. And he put his brother in charge of the armed forces. Of course, there was the Bay of Pigs invasion. Uh, but beyond that, people were hurting economically although there was a lot of good that happened. So the economy never really grew in a sustained way uh, during Fidel's presidency. Uh, the old Soviet-style central planning system that he adopted from the Soviet Union in the 60s and especially in the 70s just never really worked. And that's why today his brother, Raul Castro, is trying to transform the Cuban economy and move in the direction of a kind of market socialism modeled on what's being done in China and Vietnam. So uh, we know that Raul supported the normalizing of relations um, and also some other economic reforms, obviously. But do you expect to see sort of um, a, a flood of reforms coming out now that his brother has passed? You know, Fidel was uh, retired, and he'd been retired for a decade. But it was clear that he was skeptical both about the pace of economic reform, which went way farther than anything he had ever tried, and skeptical about the normalization of relations with the United States, as he said when, uh, uh, when President Obama visited Cuba. So although I don't think he was interfering in politics, I think other people in the Cuban leadership who agreed with him mm -hmm. and were skeptical uh, felt uh, empowered by his opposition to sort of put on the brakes in terms of both internal reform and normalization with the United States. Now that he's gone, I think that the pace of change could speed up. Uh, would you say that he was somewhat beloved in Latin America ever, everywhere he went? And if so, why is that? Well, he had enormous prestige in Latin America, and it's because he was the first Latin American head of state to stand up to the United States, defy the United States, and survive and not be overthrown by the United States. How would you describe him in terms of um, his own um, inward looking at himself? Like, did he see himself as a really uh, authoritarian figure, an egomaniac? Or did he really believe in his heart he was doing what was best for the Cuban people? Well, I think there's no doubt he believed that what he was doing was right. Um, he was very dedicated to certain key principles, derived more from Jose Marti, Cuba's founder, than from Marx or, or Lenin. But there were principles that involved an absolute unyielding dedication to Cuban independence and a real belief in social equality, which is part of Cuban political culture that goes all the way back to the War of Independence. So post-1959, quickly, how would you gauge how the people felt about him, since there's not a free press, there's no polling? Well, in the 60s and the 70s, there was enormous enthusiasm, almost a kind of euphoria, over the success of the revolution against a hated dictator. But as the economy failed to really function effectively, people became more and more disaffected. There are some polls that have been done by outside organizations in Cuba on the quiet, um, and they show a big di uh, difference among generations. That generation that was around in the 60s and the 70s, as you saw in the earlier report, still have enormous affection for Fidel and for the revolution. But a generation that grew up in the 1990s after the collapse of the Soviet Union, when the economy was terrible, they're very disaffected, and, and they don't see the merit of the old system. They want to see it either change or they want to leave. All righty. William Leo Grant, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure.